It is no surprise that DeepSeek has been getting a lot of attention lately, and I suppose in keeping with that theme, for today's video we are going to do a quick local install and test of the newly released Janus Pro models from DeepSeek. These are multimodal models that will allow you to actually ask a question about an image and get that question answered, as well as actually do some text to image generation, all from within the same Gradio web interface, which is pretty darn cool. We will begin here just in the GitHub, and we can see that on today's date, which is January 27th, 2025, Janus Pro has been released, an improved version of Janus. And for today's video, that's what we're going to be testing. Now, there are two versions that have been released. There is a Janus Pro 1 billion parameter model and a Janus Pro 7 billion parameter model. Going to the actual Hugging Face repository for either of these where we can see all of the model files hosted, we can see that the 7 billion parameter model is about a 15 gigabyte download, while the 1 billion parameter model is about like four, four and a half total. So there is a big difference in size of these models. And due to that, I suppose that one of the common questions would be how much VRAM does either of these utilize? So for the video today, we're actually going to be testing both of these models just to see one, how they perform and two, how VRAM utilization differs, just to give kind of a benchmark for those at home who may be interested in actually seeing if they could run either of these or perhaps both of these on their local system. It is really quite simple to get this actually all set up and going, and that's basically what we're going to do right now. If we go down to number three here, or the quick start in the Janus GitHub repository, we can see that installation of this is quite easy. I like to use Conda environments, which is what I'm going to do here, and I am simply going to create a new environment. I cannot talk and type at the same time very well. And we can see that they just have one requirement here, which is just Python greater than or equal to 3.8. I am using Python 3.10, and the dash Y flag I have appended to the end of this command will just basically go ahead and automatically say yes to anything Conda may have asked me. Now that that's done, we can essentially just go ahead and activate our newly created Conda environment. And once we are in here, our next step is to actually clone this GitHub repository onto our local machine. So we just type git clone and then paste the URL of this repository, which we can find when we go here into the code button and the drop down, we find it right here. And once we do this, it will go ahead and clone this onto our local machine. Once that's done, our next step is to just go into that folder. So CD Janus, and I will just clear my terminal um, routinely just to kind of keep the amount of old text in there uh, light so it's easier to read. The next thing is really just to do pip install dash e space period. But because we're wanting to actually do the Gradio web interface as well, which is essentially the same thing you would see if you were to go to the Hugging Face page for DeepSeek and you see that there are some spaces running right here. And one of them is chat with Janus Pro 7B. So this actual like website look, if you will, is the Gradio web interface. And we want to actually clone this and run it on our local machine. So in order to do that, we're going to scroll down to the end of section three here in the quick start and we actually do see that there is a slightly different installation command here which will include that kind of web interface and allow us to run that locally so once I get back down there we will just copy this and paste it into our terminal and that will go ahead and install the dependencies as well as the Janus repository in the way that it will allow it to work with itself and the models we're going to download and once that has completed, we can essentially just run Python demo app Janus Pro .py, which will open the web interface. However, what I want to do here is first off, try the 1 billion parameter model. So we are actually going to need to make one change in this script to actually tell it to download the 1 billion parameter model instead of the 7 billion parameter model. In order to do that, we are going to go into the demo folder. Like I said, I can't type and talk the demo folder on our local machine and find that script, which is app underscore Janus Pro dot pi. We are going to copy this and I'm going to edit this in nano, which is a in terminal text editor, but you can edit this in VS code or any other IDE you would like. When we open this file, we will be able to scroll down here and see that under the model path, 
Right now it is written as the seven billion parameter model. So when you run this for the first time, it will essentially download the model files and things from the Hugging Face repository, which we can see right here. So it will download all these when you run it for the first time. Because I want this to initially start and use the one billion parameter model, we are just going to change this to reflect that. So instead of 7B, it will be the one billion parameter model. The second thing that I want to make note of is that when you actually start this, it will also make a live shareable link for the Gradio web interface. Being that we are going to just want to run this locally on our machine and don't need a actual live shareable link to give to anyone, we can scroll all the way down here in this demo script. And basically on the last line here where it says demo.launch and in parentheses it says share equals true, we can actually just go ahead and remove that. And in doing that, it will just give us the local URL of this running on our local host or our local machine. So that is more of a preferential thing, but personally, I always like to just make sure it doesn't generate that shareable live link, if you will. Once that's done, the only other thing we need to do is make sure that we go back out of the demo folder because you want to run the actual command here from just the Janus folder and no subfolder from within it. And as we do this now, we will see that it will spin up a Gradio web interface for us that will be using the 1 billion parameter model. Now I have already gone ahead and tested these on my machine, so it is not going to download the model files for me because it has already done that. However, if you're following along and running this for the first time on your machine, when you run this, it will go ahead and download the actual model files, which will take a little bit of time depending upon your network speed. Remember the 1 billion parameter model is probably like a four and a half gigabyte download and the 7B was like 15 to 16. And when we do this, we are going to see some things, but one of those things will be a clickable link that will actually bring us to the web interface running on our local machine. We can now see that we have a local URL to click on, which will go ahead and open what we saw in that Hugging Face Spaces, except this is all running on our local machine, and we can now go ahead and actually test Janus 1B or Janus Pro 1B. Now, to begin, I think what I'm actually going to do is start with the text to image generation, and then I will actually save the output from that and then use that for the multimodal understanding. I never really like to test things with the default examples they give because I like to, I suppose, add my own personal touch into it and then test it on like unseen data, if you will, or something of that sort. Now, prompting is very important because the more descriptive it is, is correlated to generally how well the image comes out, as they say here. But I suck at prompting, so we're just going to do... A sports car driving on the Las Vegas Strip. Now I am using OBS as well so when we look at the VRAM utilization of the card right here we want to keep in mind that OBS and screen recording is going to add uh, one or two gigabyte overhead to the actual usage of the card. So with that said it just generated five images of perhaps questionable quality and we can see that it did seem to top around 14 gigabytes of video RAM usage. Um, and here are the images. I'm not really going to be analyzing the results and things like that. This is more just kind of a trial and just to see how it works and how it looks and things of that sort. But I do want to say that my prompt is pretty poor and they say that more detail can produce a better image. So I suppose we can just go ahead and use one of their demo prompts. But instead, I think instead of intrinsically designed I, the right intrinsically designed sports car. <laughs> So we'll add some personalization into this prompt and we'll once again go and generate the images and we'll see if they are of better quality with that intricate prompt. Okay, and that I, I'm seeing 17 gigs of video memory used right there, which is kind of a lot. All right, <laughs> these are definitely of much better quality and I think the next thing we're going to do now is, sure. So we have saved that image to the desktop now, and we are going to scroll back up all the way to the multimodal understanding, which to put it in plain English just basically means you can show it a photo and then ask it about the photo, and it will be able to actually respond to your query, which we will do now. 
What is this? <laughs> a stylized eye. Okay. What is this? Be specific as possible, please. Much better. This is an artistic depiction of an eye. The eye is intricately detailed, striking blue iris. Unfortunately, so that's good, but my sports car thing didn't really seem to make any effect here. But that is okay. For the 1B, this is pretty much what we have. And I'm basically just going to jump straight into this and go ahead and now try this with the 7B model. And as I do that, the first thing I'm going to do is just close this. So I'm going to do Control C, which will close the server. And I'm going to clear out of there. So if we actually tried to do anything else in here, we would see that it is no longer being served because we shut down that um, script, if you will. I am going to now need to once again modify the demo script that we did before because I want to now point it to the 7 billion parameter model. So I'm just going to use nano again to quickly edit this and we scroll down once more to the model path here. And this time instead of the 1B model, we are going to change that to 7B. And again, I do actually have these already downloaded on the system because it just makes the video faster to go as well if I don't have to sit and wait for big files. But remember that you only want to run this from the actual Janus folder and no subfolders within it or else it just wouldn't work. So we will now do Python demo. And this will actually go ahead and run this with the 7 billion parameter model as opposed to the 1 billion parameter model. So we'll get to kind of see the difference in them and what they say and things of that sort. We can now see that it has once again loaded, except this time we are going to be able to use the 7 billion parameter version of Janus Pro which we have here. Now, there obviously is no visual difference when you open the Gradio web interface. However, I do actually want to give it that same image that was generated with the 1B, and we'll ask it the same question, which is, what is this? And let's just see how its output differs with a simple question like that. So before, I believe it had just said a stylized eye. And we can see that with the same basic question, this is a detailed illustration of an eye, okay? So this is almost more akin to when I had specified, like, please be specific. And we can just basically do that now and see how the 7B model does with, <laughs> okay, so it doesn't seem to have actually been any more specific than it just was with the what is this. So again, this is not necessarily like a strict academic testing of this is just kind of a way to get a feel for it and see how to install it and run it and things like that. And we can see right now we're using around 18.4 gigabytes of video memory and keep in mind OBS is probably accounting for about one and a half gigabytes of that so make of that what you will. I suppose now I will just try my sports car prompt again. And right here during image generation is where I'll get a little concerned if I might OOM or out of memory, which is basically when your video card apparatus has no more available video memory to perform a task, you get that error. Fortunately, while getting close to the limit, it does seem that if you have a 24 gigabyte card, you should be able to be able to go ahead and run the 7B of this without too much issue. And again, these image generations are not the best. However, my prompt was, again, somewhat lackluster. So as we did before, let's just go ahead and put the long demo prompt in. But instead of I, we will just type sports car. <laughs> and we'll see what happens. You can see the images are taking a bit longer to actually generate when the prompt is far more detailed than my lackluster single sentence prompt. So that also speaks to the actual quality of the outputted image being heavily dependent upon the intricacy of the prompt. And we can see that this time, while it did still capture the stylized eye, it does also have an automotive-esque theme to it, which I would say is rather nice. So I'm just going to save this once more and we will just overwrite the original one that I had done that with. And I suppose as like a kind of like to wrap this up, we'll just pipe this back into it. This is almost like a meta like generation and understanding weird loop sort of thing. And we'll ask what this is. <laughs> a car. Okay. Um, what is this?
and we get better if we ask it a more intricate question. Please be specific. I'm gonna just ask it like something totally unrelated to the image as well and see if, it's, see if it references and responds to this. Also, side note, can you tell me about the purpose of a piston in a cylinder? I guess that's slightly automotive related, but let's just see what it says. And obviously it is taking longer to answer. Okay, so it does correctly respond to the weird kind of sub question that I had asked it. Very cool. I suppose uh, the final thing I wanna do is just let's see how high, okay, so that's locked to not go over one, but even if we put it at one, it will likely have a more interesting response. Um, point one is relatively low, I think, for a temperature setting, but Okay, so it was rather similar. And I wonder if, no, because I can't show that on YouTube. All right, um, my curiosity was something around um, whether or not it has certain restrictions on types of images it will generate. But <laughs> with that said, I basically just wanted to kind of cash in on the deep seek hike, deep seek, deep seek hype, I'm kidding. But uh, I wanted to just kind of test this and show how it was. And something I always get curious about when I see models and things like that is how much video RAM do they need to run and can I even run? So for those who may find themselves a little confused and be like, well, this is only like a 1B model or like a 7B model. Like I can run those on like a Raspberry Pi with Olama. These are not really quantized like those are. So even though the parameters of these models seem small, they are still relatively performance intensive to actually run. And that is just kind of a nature of, I suppose, some of the design and architecture of these models, especially vision models in general, and ones that can do image generation and multimodal sort of things like that. So I did, I don't know if I said this already in the video, but I did try just doing the tiny, tiniest one along with some optimizations on the Jetson Aura Nano Super 8 gig. And unfortunately, it was just not at all going to be something that would be possible very likely. So um, yeah, make of that what you will. But for my Jetson folks out there, I do apologize. I had to do a strictly uh, desktop PC kind of focused video. Other than that, um, I suppose it is rather interesting. There's definitely some more technical things and stuff like that here. I noticed that with all of the news around DeepSeek and things like that, there has definitely been sort of a, um, I don't know how to put this lightly, but a lot of folks have been critiquing like the data implications of like running these models and you're giving your data over to them and things like that. I do wanna just point out for the sake of my videos, Whenever I am running something, even though like, hey, we're running this locally and offline, a lot of times your computer is still connected to a network, even if you're running an offline LLM. I just would like to make note that all of the computers I use to film my videos are not burner devices, but they don't have any sensitive information of mine. And in addition to that, they're not actually able to access other devices on my network that are like personal devices and things like that. So regardless of your stance on like data privacy and things like that, I think it is just important and pertinent to mention that you want to take some precaution in what devices you experiment on. Suppose with that out of the way, that really is going to wrap this up. I just kind of wanted to do something with it and test it and see how much VRAM it used. And it was good to, I suppose, put my liquid cooling system to the test um, since the disaster, if you will. <laughs> All right, that's going to conclude it. If you have any questions, leave the comment, let me know. And thank you for watching.